In this video, we're going to give a very simple, quick introduction to programming. It doesn't matter which language you're actually going to program in. There are certain sort of principles that you should be aware of, certain sort of ways of thinking, certain vocabulary that you should be aware of. And that's what we'll cover uh, very quickly in this video. The central idea is that of translating ideas into code. I have an idea. I want to productize that idea. I have an idea. I want to turn that idea into an application. So in some way, thinking of programming is like thinking of translating ideas into code. But what are the processes that happen in between? Right? It's just not going to go from an idea to code immediately. There are certain processes that will have to happen in the middle. So you can think of this as a three-stage process. Stage one, computational thinking. Stage two, algorithmic thinking. And stage three is writing good code. So that's your three-stage process that you need to think about. So let's start with computational thinking. Essentially, what we want is a way of solving problems computationally. Now, what does that sort of really mean? So if you think in terms of knowledge, the knowledge comes in, let's say, two forms, or we can describe it in two forms. The two forms are declarative and imperative knowledge. Declarative knowledge is like statement of facts. This is true. Imperative knowledge is ways of how do I get to that truth? How to? How do I get there? Now, let's give a very simple example. Now, uh, let's imagine we just talk about a statement of fact as what makes up a cup of tea, something which we can all relate to. Let's just say that a cup of tea is water plus tea leaves plus milk plus sugar. You need not have milk, you need not have sugar. But let's just say that our statement of fact is that a cup of tea is water plus tea leaves plus milk plus sugar. That's a statement of fact. But how do you get there? How do you actually make a cup of tea? That would be imperative knowledge. So there would be a sequence of steps that you need to actually follow and once you followed that sequence of steps, what you get out of it, what you get at the end of it, you can say that is a cup of tea. So essentially, you can break this up into two components. One is a statement of fact, and the second is how to do something, how to get somewhere. The second component is algorithmic thinking. So think of it as a, a sort of three stage process. Stage one is a sequence of steps. Stage two is deciding and specifying when the steps are executed. And stage three is identifying or determining or specifying when to actually stop. So it's a three stage process. Sequence of steps, decide on execution, when what will be executed, and decide when to stop. If you put these three together, essentially this constitutes an algorithmic way of thinking. Essentially, you created an algorithm. This is essentially like just like cooking or making any dish. So if you use the example of, of, of tea, uh, then the sequence of steps matters. The various ingredients matter. So a simple way to say is that uh, I boil water, I add the tea leaves, I add the milk, I add the sugar, and I stop after it has reached a certain level. So you have to have a sequence of steps, you've got to decide when to execute what, and you have to decide when to stop. You actually have to tell the program when to actually stop. Just the way when you're making a cup of tea, you have to decide when to stop. Now let's get to the point uh, of writing good code. What are the elements of writing good code? I mean, there are numerous elements, but let's highlight three key elements. Number one, it has to be understandable by humans. Right? If people can't understand your code, they're not going to be able to make sense of your code. 
The second is that it should be well organized. Now, why do you want it well organized? If it's well organized, it will be easy to maintain. And that is an important element of writing good code. Third is, ideally, your code should also be modular. It should be written in a modular manner. And the reason you want to emphasize that is because then it is much easier to build with code that is written in a modular manner. So essentially, these three elements put together are the elements of writing good code. There's, of course, an enormous amount of sort of debate which is going on whether is it humans with AI or is it humans versus AI. Now, we're not going to get into the sort of broad uh, debate, but if you look at it within the context of writing code, which is you're writing code, you're checking code, you're maintaining code, then yes, it is true that AI can help us. But we are the ones who have to decide what are the elements of good code. How do we check code? How do we maintain code? So we have to do that design process. And today, in fact, AI can help us to make that whole process more efficient. But the design of that has to be done by us.